Good morning, this is Pastor David Charlton, and this is my devotion for Wednesday, November the 17th, 2021. The sermon text for this coming week is Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. Let me read that now. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. What is this prophecy about? Well, first let's talk about what's going on in the context of this prophecy. So Isaiah begins by speaking of the land of Zebulun, and the land of Naphtali. Zebulun and Naphtali were conquered in 733 BC by the king of Assyria. They were the first people of Israel conquered and taken into exile. In 721, all ten northern tribes will be conquered and taken into exile. But the beginning was in Zebulun and Naphtali. And so Galilee of the nations, by the way of the sea and beyond the Jordan, are three um, territories named by the king of Assyria who was ruling that area. And so Isaiah's prophecy is good news for them. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. The darkness is the oppression of living under the rule of a foreign king. The great light will be when the Davidic king will come and free them. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. That's a common image for us as human beings. We know what it means when darkness comes, and we know what dawn means. But sometimes in history, the darkness comes and there is no dawn. When we die, we don't come back from death. Kingdoms fall, never to rise again. Nations disappear from history. Whole civilizations fall. It could have been that way for Israel, but God has promised that there will be a dawn that will come after the darkness. There is hope for them. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. The people living in that time would know what rejoicing at the harvest was like. We're going to have a harvest feast in a few, uh, in a few days, in, in about a week, Thanksgiving. But their harvest festival made our Thanksgiving pale in comparison. It was a time of great rejoicing for people because they would have food for another year. And every warrior knows what it's like to win a battle, to defeat your enemy, and to feel the joy of knowing that you have won. That's the same joy that the people of Zebulun and Naphtali, the people of Galilee, are going to feel when the light dawns upon them. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressors. What is this uh, Midian's defeat that Isaiah talks about? In the book of Judges, 
uh, chapter 6 through 8, we hear the story of Gideon. Gideon is a leader of the people of Israel, one of the judges. And God raises him up to defeat the Midianites who come into Israel every year and destroy the crops and take all the food and leave the people with nothing to eat. And so God sent Gideon. Only 300 men was what Gideon had with him. And they surrounded the camp of the Midianites at night they had trumpets and they had torches, but they covered the torches with pots so they couldn't be seen. And then at a particular time, a signal went out and they took the pots off. They broke the pots from on top of the torches and they blew the trumpets and the Midianites thought they were surrounded by a great army and they panicked and they began to kill each other. And they ran all the way across the Jordan and it was a great defeat for the Midianites and a great victory for the people of Israel. So they always remembered the story of Gideon and the great victory he won. Likewise, God is going to win a victory over Assyria. Israel isn't going to do it. God is going to do it. That's what he promises. And the yoke and the bar are obviously implements you use on oxen or other beasts of burden. The people of Zebulun and Naphtali have been made beasts of burden for the king of Assyria, but they will be set free. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. The weapons of war will be destroyed because God's people will have peace. Compare this to the second chapter of Isaiah where God says they will beat their swords into plowshares. And then comes what scholars call a psalm. It's a song. And it's like the kind of song that would be sung when a king was coronated. You can compare it to Psalm number 2, which is a psalm of coronation. And so this is the same kind of song. Anticipating the crowning of the Davidic king who is going to come and bring light to his people. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. In Second Samuel chapter 7, God made a promise to David to establish his household and to place one of his sons on his throne forever. So here is a prophecy about the fulfilling of that promise that God made to David. Um, now, you notice it's a promise of a birth, birth of a child. A similar promise is made in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 4, where the birth of the um, child from the virgin is a sign of God's coming salvation for his people. Obviously, in the New Testament, we are told that this is fulfilled in Jesus, in his birth in Bethlehem. That is a sign that God's salvation is now dawning. And we hear about him that he will be a good king. He will be wise, a wonderful counselor. He will be a powerful warrior, mighty God. He will be a caring king, everlasting father, and he will establish peace for his people. You might go and read uh, chapter 11 of Isaiah, where again we hear about the same kind of king who has wisdom and strength, who is good and just and who establishes peace. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 through 11. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Again, God promised that one of David's descendants would be on his throne forever. And God will do this. Now, what makes this prophecy um, so important? Well, obviously, we can hear already echoes of Jesus in this prophecy. But I want to focus on 
the geographical location. There is a valley in northern Israel, in Galilee, called the Jezreel Valley. The Jezreel Valley um, borders, or is actually part of Galilee. So the first, um, the first time I want to focus on is Midian's defeat, uh, Gideon's defeat of the Midianites, which happened in the Jezreel Valley. That's where it happened. So that's why Isaiah mentions Gideon, because that defeat of the foreign invaders happened right there in Galilee, in the Jezreel Valley. Well, now the darkness has fallen on Galilee. So the darkness has fallen on the Jezreel Valley. The final uh, place in the Bible I want you to think about is um, Nazareth. The village of Nazareth sits right on the edge of the Jezreel Valley. You can look into the Jezreel Valley from Nazareth. And that's where Jesus grew up. In, in his time, people wondered, why would the Messiah come from Nazareth? Shouldn't he come from Jerusalem or Bethlehem? Well, in fact, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, but he grew up in Nazareth and he was known as a Nazarene. Why would the Messiah come from there? But if we look at Isaiah chapter 9, we see why. Because God said, the first place that became dark when Assyria conquered Israel and took it into exile is the first place where the light is going to shine. The light of Jesus is going to shine on all of Israel and finally on all nations. But first of all, it's going to shine there in Galilee, in the Jezreel Valley, where the darkness fell for the first time. The first people to see the darkness of defeat and exile were right there. And that's where the light of God's coming salvation is going to shine. In the same valley in which Gideon defeated the Midianites. So it makes sense, if we think about it, why Jesus grew up in Nazareth. Because the light had to shine there first, just as Isaiah had said. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we know that dawn always follows night, but in human history it doesn't always happen that way. People die and they don't come back. Kingdoms fall. Nations disappear. Cultures disintegrate. And they never return. But you promise for your people there will always be a dawn. There was darkness for Zebulun and Naphtali, but the dawn came when Jesus lived there in Nazareth. And he preached the gospel first of all in Galilee. God, remind us that when we face darkness in our lives, there will be a dawn, and his name is Jesus Christ. He is the king you have promised to bring light to all nations. He is the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. In the deepest darkness, give us that hope of the light that Jesus will bring to us. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with me today, and may God bless you on your journey.